Australia Day, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see, I'm heading out onto Port River. I'm about to go and do a little bit of a tour of the river before then heading out on the open sea. And the first thing we're going to come across is a rather well-known yacht. This is Brindabella. She's won the Sydney Hobart on one occasion and she's finished runner-up on a further four occasions. Uh, it's often referred to as the People's Maxi. It's a beautiful boat. Uh, retired from racing now and you can actually pay to go out on it for a trip to sail on it. You can have events on it. You can have weddings on it. As you can imagine, I'm quite keen to get out on the boat if the opportunity presents itself. I've always wanted to sail on that boat and it just happens to be right next door to our sailing club. So there she is, the first landmark in the Port River and it's a rather famous one to everyone in yachting circles in Australia. As you can see, there's a lot of commercial traffic in the Port River. It's one of the things you do have to be careful of when you're sailing or motoring up and down it. There's a lot of commercial traffic and if something's coming, you've got to uh, make sure that you're mindful of that and get out of the way. The next landmark is the well-known bridge that goes across the Port River here. And this is a bridge that opens up in the middle. So for all the major shipping, they have to wait for it to be able to open. But unfortunately, so do we, because we've got a, a big mast. And there's actually a boat that's very similar to this in the club, a Hood 20, whose mast is just a little bit shorter. They can get under that when it's shut. I can't. So I'm not, I'm not disappointed that I can run bigger sails, but uh, unfortunately, just by a very small amount, I can't get under the bridge, so I'd actually have to only do it once it was open, which means I can't explore any further up in Port Adelaide than that, unless they open it up. And we're not gonna do that today. We're now just entering a docking area, which houses a number of boats. There's a few tugs, there's a big barge here on which we have the City of Adelaide uh, Clipper Ship, as I understand it. This is being very slowly restored. It's a rather uh, significant uh, wooden ship that they brought back to Adelaide. Obviously, the name is symbolic of Adelaide. That's one of the reasons it's here. And as you can see from the sign, um, you can actually do tours of this. I haven't, but uh, at some stage I'm going to. Normally, we also have a sail training ship called the One and All. Uh, it's not in here at the moment, which suggests to me that it's actually out on the open sea doing a tour, being Australia Day as it is. And we might yet come across her during the day. I've actually spent uh, a week on the well Royal Sail training ship, so that'll be interesting if we come across it. Given that uh, most of the tugs, if not all of them, seem to be in, what that suggests to me is there's no major shipping that's likely to come in today might be wrong but um, yeah, at the moment I think we can be well assured that most of the Port River is going to be clear for our journey out. I think I just saw a dolphin close to the ship. It was one of the things that is really nice about the Port River is that it's a dolphin sanctuary. So you could be sailing along even at night and you might not even see them and you hear them. They're right up close to the boat, riding the bow wave of your boat. There might be two or three of them. It's really one of the most rewarding things. They actually do dolphin cruises, but we have our own boat to do those cruises with, which is nice. We're just coming out of the north arm of the Port River, and that leads to the ship's graveyard, which is quite interesting to paddle around if you're into kayaking. Some of the wrecks have historical relevance um, and some of them have been used by uh, marine archaeologists to do their thesis on. Uh, the Sunbeam, for example, is quite close to the causeway there. I've spoken to a gentleman who actually did his university studies on that particular wreck. At the time, I was actually working for a scuba diving company and I did a story on a wreck called the San Diego which is just around the corner. I mean, you can't see it from here and it'll be out of sight anyway, but it's a, an iron bark whose hull is for the most part intact. It's 150 or so years old. So that's quite remarkable in itself. I believe it had uh, three masts, but they've all been removed in there beside the wreck. 
and this was back in about 2000, I paddled up to it, took my scuba diving gear, had a bit of an exploration. I even got inside the wreck and had a look. And um, yeah, you have to paddle to, to find it, or a lot of fishermen go around it. There's quite a few bream I've seen underneath it. Then there's a wreck called the Dorothy H. Sterling, which is the largest ship in the graveyard. It's, an, it's a wooden ship. Not that you'd know it unless you were really close because it looks pretty much like a mangrove. In fact, it has pretty much been reclaimed by mangroves, but that doesn't make it any less interesting. So we can't get to it today from here because of the bridge. You'd have to go around the other way through the Barker Inlet, but it's certainly somewhere that uh, is worth exploring, somewhere I have explored um, and got some footage of. Maybe at a later stage, we'll um, take the boat round into the Barker Inlet and see if we can go and have a look. We've just come in to have a slightly closer look at Australian uh, Shipping Corporation. It was formerly the Submarine Corporation. Uh, this is where they have built all six of our Collins class submarines and also our air warfare destroyers. And they have the um, maintenance contracts, I think, for a good few of those as well. I'm not entirely sure what that ship behind us is, but um, it looks like that was built here as well. It's one of ours because it's got an Australian red kangaroo on it. All Australian Navy ships have that. But we, we have built ships in Australia that we've uh, sold to other countries. For example, New Zealand. Two of the Anzac class light patrol frigates, they were built for the purpose of giving to New Zealand or selling to New Zealand. And although they weren't built in South Australia, I'm just passing another landmark that might be a little bit familiar because it was in one of our other videos, the one where we did the renaming. It's the Quarantine Jetty. I'm not sure if it's actually called that anymore, but that's what I believe it used to be used for. Um, what I do know is this is an area that gets used quite a lot by a lot of yachtsmen and um, even fishermen as a protected anchorage. So if you want to stay here and, and sleep overnight, it's out of the shipping lanes and yet still deep enough to basically anchor a, a full keel boat. Just coming into view behind me should be a bypass that's often referred to as the cutting by sailors and fishermen. It's a basically a gap in the mangroves that to be honest it probably needs to be dredged out a little bit more. It is a little bit shallow in all but the highest tide and there is quite a big sandbank on the other side but I have taken this boat which is a shoal draft boat most of the way through and the only thing that stopped me is I saw um, quite a shallow sandbank and I managed to turn around before getting to that but it is a convenient way if you've got the right size boat to get back from the Barker Inlet in an extremely high tide as you get closer to the mouth of the Port River there are a few shipping terminals, the first of which is used for container ships. Um, if you were to go close to the ship, you'd see that the depth of the water is about uh, 15 meters, so plenty deep enough for these really large ships, even when they're fully laden. As you can probably see at the moment, there's quite a few large yachts near the mouth of the river. And the reason they're all accumulating at this side, I believe, is because in the background, there's a 
cargo ship that's just come in. So everyone's staying well clear of that. After about an hour's cruising, we are on the open sea. And if there's enough breeze, I might even put the sail up. I've just turned the boat around so we're now running with the water. It's a little bit lumpier than it was. So I thought we'd start heading back. We've got up to the semaphore jetty. So we've got about an hour and a half to get back to the mouth of the Port River. A lovely evening. Look at that cloud bank behind me. That's where the sun is. I'm back on the Port River now, heading home after a lovely day out doing a bit of a tour around for everyone. It's the first time I've had the sails up. I've got the main sail anyway, which is a lot easier to control by myself. Yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. You can see the crowds on the beach as you go past, there's little dots, and it looked like a lot of people were out enjoying it today, but I always prefer a bit of space, so where else would you want to be but out on the ocean? <laughs> 